And we are back live here at EIF WrestleMania 9, despite the unfortunateness of 2K. I'm sure they're extremely mad that we're here, but we are, guys, and you're not getting rid of us. So we want to just quickly explain everything that happened if you're just now tuning in. James and Prof Jag have put on an epic match that lasted well over 20 minutes, and unfortunately the game disconnected. So we had to come up with some sort of resolve. Our decision was to essentially restart the match exactly as it had last half. Uh, uh, ugh, gosh, tongue-tied. Oh, well, not the first botch. The server's disconnected 18 times. That was the first ones. But anyway, the only difference is that both James and Prof will start out with a full set of reversals. However, they are both starting the match where they ended it last. James had one finisher in possession. Prof Jag had two. We are also starting out in terms of finisher count where it had ended last. James had two finishers hit, Prof Jack had six. Based on the EIF rules, if Prof Jack hits one more finisher, this match ends via the finisher count. Uh, the only way it wouldn't is if James were able to reverse that finisher. So, we are going to restart this matchup. Six finishers to two. James, are you ready? Prof Jack, are you ready? Let the WrestleMania match continue. Ding, ding, ding. All right, so James and Prof, to the cheering of the AI audience, as well as those in EIF attendance here on the EIF network, they are back in one-on-one -on -one action against each other. As this match, which has now lasted roughly 20-some minutes, is fortunately still happening. But it could, could end up ending Rather quickly as Prof Jack tosses James over the top rope and he's just been eliminated from the Royal Rumble. There goes James' chances. Oh wait, that happened in January. Yet again, second time in the year he's been eliminated. And Prof Jack gonna wait out. The match has been now going for roughly a minute. Wink. As now James is on all fours. Referee will not have count out in this match, so that's one benefit these two will be given. Weapons are not allowed, although myself and Ratluck are gatekeepers standing over two weapons. We can't explain that reasoning. See if Prof Jack will allow a clean entry. He does not. And James didn't allow it. Wait a minute, referee is down. Prof Jack has to have the referee up to count. James being picked up. This could be the end of the match. Prof Jack gets reversed. And he hangs on the apron. James can come over. And a strike, which is completely legal. Don't forget, guys, coming up next, we still have one more Money in the Bank qualifier. It was 4-3 in taunts at the end of the match, so James has just used his fifth and final taunt project. Still has two left. I forgot to mention that, so I apologize. But, yes, coming up next will be our final Money in the Bank qualifier. As James now running and runs into a small package. Project can win. Project can win. One, two, and James kicks out. But, again, Prof able to maintain offense because of it. James has got to be careful. He's about to gain his third reversal back, but Prof could look to end it with the seventh finisher. James got a little scared. Can't blame him. And now, attitude adjustment. 6-3, six, 6-3, three, six, three. James could win the match. One, two, and Prof Jag uses the shoulder to get out of it. Now, James is out of finishers. So this will be tricky. Prof Jag would like, you'd think, ideally to gain all four reversals back before using another reversal, especially given that James doesn't even have a signature. He could be getting one, though, before Prof gets that fourth reversal back. And he was thinking about it, and that's why Prof had to use it. Prof uses the reversal there, didn't want to give James any luxuries. James about to gain his third reversal back, but Prof about to maybe hit the seventh finisher and end the match. James thought he was thinking about it, and he reversed. James now with a signature in hand. Prof uses recovery, and James again gets the five-knuckle shuffle. You can't see me. James with a finisher in hand. Prof Jack, though, with nearly three reversals. Make it down to one. James, attitude adjustment, 6-4. Six, six, oh, wait a minute, James is down. James is down. James has got to crawl over there. He's got to be able to get Prof for the cover, and he does. One, two, and Prof Jag gets the shoulder up. Carry over the 20-some minutes that happened before this. 
And this is, so far, the third match of the day, the match of the night. James and Prof tearing the roof off the place. Prof uses a reversal and a drop kick. And now James could be all over. Prof has one finisher in his arsenal. He needs one finisher to win this match. Seven finishers, James R. Koffel did not get it, and that is where the match ends. Prof Jag, seven, four finisher count. If you include this, it was nearly a half hour match. Great match, guys, to both of you. Prof gets his first WrestleMania victory, and he could be looking for his second as he joins NBC Master, Frost, and Greedy in later on this evening for the Money in the Bank. So there is one spot left. It is the match of the night so far. Beat that. Greedy Frost, NBC, Prof Jag, and now it's time to see who joins them. In our next matchup is Pepsi Killer versus Midnight Mayfire. Midnight Mayfire representing the Swiss Superman, Cesaro. Pepsi Killer representing the architect of the shield, Seth Rollins. This will be the final Money in the Bank qualifier of the day. We will have our Money in the Bank scheduled. And remember, guys, our Money in the Bank is going to be coming up very late in the evening. This is our third, it'll be our third to last match. In the meantime, we're just getting some stuff out of the way. So, again, guys, let's quickly uh, just recap what's happened today. We're three hours down, nine to go. We still have a lot of time. So, started out the show with the breakdown between myself and the two panelists, the rivals, Greedy and Tripod, talking about a number of big matches. And then the time for talk was over when NBC Master went to work against Deathlock. And the work was quick. Master had a quick day. Punch in, punch out. He'll be back later on tonight as he punched his ticket into Money in the Bank in a devastating performance over Deathlock. Followed by that, the connection issues began as Jumper Magnum and Ebam's match was abruptly cut short with a disconnection. Then following that, we had a rematch, and Jumper was able to best Ebam's in his one-on-one -on -one as Jumper becomes the first Australian-born superstar to appear and win at an EIF WrestleMania. Shortly after that was what has now thus far been the match of the day, with all due respect to the four competitors prior to it. James and Prof, Jack Prof, looked like it was going to be the most one-sided match when he held the green bar through five minutes of play and had already hit a finisher on James by that point. But James, like the C Nation, never giving up. He said that in the beginning of the entrance, and he stayed true to his word as they went back and forth, back and forth, until somebody had to stop them. That somebody was 2K servers. They disconnected, but after a brief timeout, we were able to recap the match, restart the match. James hitting a couple of finishers to threaten and potentially get a come-from-behind victory, but Prof able to put those thoughts to a halt and book himself into Money in the Bank later on this evening, which brings us to our next matchup, the Swiss Superman Cesaro, represented by Midnight Mayfire, and the architect Seth Rollins, represented by his opponent, Pepsi Killer, who I always find, find a way to forget.
The following contest is our third and final Money in the Bank ladder match qualifier. Introducing first on his way to the ring, representing the Swiss Superman, Cesaro, from Detroit, Michigan, Midnight Ah! So Midnight Mayfire getting set to make his WrestleMania presence felt. It was right around this time last year where Midnight was new to EIF, trying to entertain and trying to give himself an opportunity. He won the Intercontinental Championship pretty brief into his career, and then he won it yet again earlier this year. You'll notice in the statistician report from DZ, this is only Midnight's 11th match of the year. Pepsi has fought in his, what well, will be, 31 as of this match. So literally three times the amount of matches. That's because Midnight didn't end up debuting in 2K16 until January, but he's came onto the scene rather quick, and he's impressed in his time going overall 500 with a 5-5 five and five record. Let's see if he can improve that against the Architect. And now, introducing his opponent, making his way to the ring from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. He is representing the architect Seth Rollins, Pepsi Killer. Pepsi Killer is the first of two Canadian born superstars who is expected to compete tonight. And Pepsi Killer did himself a favor knowing he was going into a WrestleMania superstar to match. He needed to acquire an upgrade. We originally thought this was going to be the battle of two WWE tag team partners as Pepsi Killer was originally Tyson Kidd, but he gets a blistering upgrade to Seth Rollins through a trade with Frost, one of the opponents that Pepsi could be meeting later on this evening if he is to win this match. It's going to be an exciting match for sure. And this, of course, will fill up the rest of the card for the night in terms of the money in the bank. These are the only qualifiers need be. And what's been great about this is thus far we've only gotten into the undercard of things here at WrestleMania. We've yet to even get into the title matches. So we are now getting set to make this match online. Same style you've seen in the first three matchups. We'll have it set up as a tag team match. Same rules apply. match is up so competitors are all able to join now they would please do so no invite required in these again a lot of one-on-ones happening early on today a lot of one-on-ones in general in tonight's card but we do have a number of multi-mans also planned for later on this evening and we will get you those multi-mans as soon as we can uh, but everything is scheduled to a certain format on the card so that everybody is accommodated through the 12-hour slot. We thank the people that have been with us thus far today. Obviously, it has been uh, a lot today, for lack of a better term. There's been a lot of ups, a lot of downs, but we're here nonetheless. And to those that are watching with us, I've been interested to see who will be able to accept what I'm, what I'm calling the 12-hour challenge as Midnight Mayfire is trying to accept the challenge and hit ready for match. But uh, just really interested to see if we have anybody here that it seems like we, the majority of people that are here now have been here throughout the show. But uh, I, I'm just going to find it interesting to see who will be here at the end of the show that was here at the beginning of WrestleMania today. That's quite the task to uh, ask any superstar to do. Also, don't forget, we'll be giving some shout-outs here today on WrestleMania. And what better way to hear your name said than on the grandest stage of them all for EIF. So make sure, if you haven't done so already, you follow us. No, I am not talking to people that continue to re-follow us like Greedy last night. So again, guys, if you are a new member and you have not followed us before, make sure you follow us. You might hear your name announced here on WrestleMania.
So again, both Ratluck and I getting counted out right now. Following that, we should be all good to go. And I have been eliminated. This gives me an opportunity to see so many different characters in the game by just picking people. All right. And so now, one question left. Midnight Mayfire, are you ready? Pepsi, are you ready? Ding, ding, ding. The final qualifier is underway. And a big drop kick is what starts it off as Pepsi Killer taking the fight to Midnight Mayfire. Midnight already using a first reversal, and what an uppercut delivered. Oh. Both these com competitors, very entertaining. Remember, whoever wins these matches will be using their created character in the Money in the Bank set to take place later on this evening. Pepsi with a stomp on the leg of Midnight Mayfire, beginning to grab the ropes. He's back to both feet. Pepsi Killer says, I'll help you out, buddy. Sit out, scoop slam connects. Midnight Mayfire has never been given an opportunity to compete for a world championship in this league. Pepsi has, but only twice. And so he is hoping that he can earn himself another opportunity. It takes two matches to do so. You got to win the qualifier, and then you have to win the Money in the Bank. This is turning into a star-studded Money in the Bank night that we have planned for you. Pepsi Killer choking the life out of Midnight Mayfire right now as Midnight forced to fend off. Midnight, though, trying to gain his fourth reversal back as Pepsi has yet to use any of his. Sunset flip connects for Pepsi. Midnight's back to four. Pepsi backing up, drop kick misses. And I didn't have to use a reversal to take advantage, and he does. Scooping a slam. And big knee driven into the face of Pepsi, who's showing a lot of conservative efforts right now. Early going in his match, he uses a reversal to get out of the ring. And now Prof Jag, as soon as he is, or sorry, that's Prof Jag leaving the party, my bad. Power bomb. From Midnight. You know, I used to always mix up Midnight Mayfire and Prop Jag last year. So they've certainly taken different career paths. Both have been successful. Prop Jag's efforts have been successful earlier on, just moments ago. Midnight hoping he'll join them. And hopefully I won't confuse the two of them when they're in the match, if they are. Right now, Pepsi is standing in the way of that. Pepsi's conservative approach is beginning to wear, as is Midnight. They're both down to one and two res reversals, respectively. And what's funny is, you know, this match is now the slower pace. We talk about Sting and John Cena having that fast pace. Now you got Seth Rollins and Cesaro, and it's not as fast as you'd think it'd be. They're both out of reversals right now. And because Midnight Mayfire is the current holder of the offense, he has the advantage. Chin lock locked in for Midnight, who is down in the momentum column. But he'll be climbing up. Oh, big stomp right into the ribs of Pepsi Killer and follows it up with a kick to the chest. One taunt for Midnight Mayfire. And throws Pepsi's head back onto the canvas. And now he takes the momentum advantage. Looking to be the first one to get a signature. Not just yet, says Pepsi. And now Pepsi is the first one. Float over DDT connects. He is out of reversals as well. Stomp on the back of Midnight Mayfire. Midnight trying to get up. Pepsi is not going to make it easy. And then just out of ignorance, you know, Pepsi, is, he's gained a little bit of swagger over these last few months here in EIF. Really uh, tend to be pretty modest in the start of his career. But he's been blunt, and he's been cocky, and he's been arrogant. But it's got him some wins along the way. And I may fire reversal and a nice, beautiful vertical base drop kick. Midnight Mayfire is very smart using those strikes instead of grapples. And Pepsi again out of reversals, and he's going to backpedal here. Midnight Mayfire and him both trying to mock each other, maybe? Who will be the first one to go? Pepsi's got that extremely fast drop kick, and well, when I meant go, I fought against each other, but Midnight Mayfire is just going to exit the ring right now. Referee will begin the count. Pepsi's going to gain his first reversal back. And no clean entry from Pepsi Killer. Midnight will have to 
remember that if the tables are turned. Pepsi still in blue when it comes to stamina, so got to give him credit there. He's not going to have trouble hitting that finisher if Midnight ends up out of reversals. Very European uppercut, though, and that was a signature, and it caught Pepsi off guard. Pepsi uses his reversal, and this could be it. No! I thought we were going to see the neutralizer, and I think Midnight was hoping for it too, but Pepsi, without reversals, still able to find a way to gain the upper hand, and he's doing the smart job now of keeping that pace slow so he can maintain and regain a reversal for himself, while on Midnight's end, you gotta, you, you can't really blame him for the way he's been going at it because he doesn't want to catch himself out of reversals. You know Seth Rollins has that speed he can beat you with, and that's going to be tough. And, and, oh, wait a minute, Midnight is out of reversals now. He used a DDT, and that we're going to see if that's going to come back to bite him. Two taunts for Midnight. And Midnight will head to the outside, and Pepsi will follow in Midnight. Burrowed into the barricade by Pepsi Killer. The slow pace gets a little faster with that move. And Pepsi at the count of two going right into the ring. And he'll regain the ring advantage. And remember, he did not allow clean entry to Midnight the last time. So one would think he won't again. Midnight back to both feet. Ref at the count of, I believe, four. Might have been five. Midnight gets in. Pepsi not allowing any rest. Midnight once again uses that reversal. He's out. And oh, he's going to try and wake him up. He decided to back off. And Pepsi took advantage. Take down to Midnight Mayfire. And we could be seeing the first finisher hit. Midnight Mayfire is going to have to hold. He can get a reversal back. And he can. Oh, wait. He did get it. Pepsi Killer faked him out. And maybe Pepsi was a little concerned as he saw that reversal beginning to climb back. So maybe there was a bit of concern on the Canadian superstar. Toronto native. Hey, choking the life out of Midnight is Pepsi. Pepsi Killer, just, it, just very weird how this is, the slow, methodical pace that it is. Pepsi Killer did too many moves, and so there's the free auto reversal for Midnight Mayfire. That certainly helped his cause, and now Pepsi in the ring, clean entry provided by Midnight. Midnight Mayfire and Pepsi. Somebody is thinking finisher, and it might be Pepsi now. And he got his finisher reversed, but he used a reversal to take advantage yet again. And now Midnight is out of reversals. And Midnight, I thought, had the grapple, but somehow the reach of Pepsi Killer overrided that. And so despite the fact that he did the finisher reversal, Pepsi's going to have another finisher, and this time I don't think Midnight's going to be able to get the reversal. Although Pepsi is low on stamina. completely legal the stall time was legal it was close though pepsi had to be careful here at wrestlemania you don't want to get called especially if you're thinking about doing a finisher one finisher in hand for pepsi killer midnight has the same although midnight's momentum would also have him in the category of a signature as well this could be a curb stomp and it's going to be Curb Stomp connect banned in wwe legal in eif and this could be the end of the match one Two, and Midnight powering out at two while retaining a finisher and also gaining some momentum in doing so. Midnight Mayfire trying to get to both feet. Pepsi, uh, that suffocating offense we saw from Prop Jags, the style that Pepsi is adapting as well. Midnight Mayfire with an elbow to the face. Reversal. And now, what's that? Finisher! It was a finisher! Sharpshooter! Sharpshooter's locked in! Pepsi Killer might have to tap out! Midnight Mayfire surprised Pepsi! And it's a 1-1 finisher count! Is Pepsi going to submit? Is Midnight Mayfire going to go to the money in the bank? Not just yet. People forget that that is Cesaro's finisher. And I think that was something that Pepsi certainly did not remember. Three taunts and that will get Midnight Mayfire another finisher. He picks up Pepsi, completely legal. Right hand. Another right, stopped. Spinner on the back fist, stopped. Out of reversals is Midnight. And Midnight went for the sharpshooter again. And no, signature from Pepsi. And this is gonna make it 
it two to one. Shout out to Triple H, shout out to DZ. The pedigree connects. Pepsi killer though. Low on stamina, but he is going to be able to get up. Midnight Mayfire is going to have to find a way to kick out. Two. A little bit of lag, and that certainly helped him. Pepsi Killer taking advantage in the lag, and he's able to get in to Money in the Bank. But I got to be honest, I don't know if Midnight Mayfire would have kicked out or not. There's no for sure answer, but there was definitely a split second of lag from two to three as lag disconnects connection in general continue to be the theme of eif wrestlemania 9 it's been the theme of most eif wrestlemanias and it helps pepsi killer in this aspect as it will be pepsi killer prof jag nbc master frost and greedy in tonight's money in the bank ladder match All right, guys, well, we are going to take another TV timeout. And when we return, we will reveal our next matchup here at WrestleMania 9. Stay tuned.